Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurial Impact. My name is David Donaldson. I'm here with my associate, Joe Martin. And today, all the way from the luxurious lakefront community of Lake Anna, Virginia, we have Lori Nolt, entrepreneur, independent broker, independent woman, business owner, and newly crowned associate and partner within KW. Lori, welcome aboard and welcome to Entrepreneurial Impact. Thank you. Thank you for having me today, Dave. Absolutely. Very excited to have this conversation because your conversation is going to be a little bit different for people because you are a business owner. You built something, right? And you're continuing to grow and build and recognize that, hey, there's other things out there for me that I want to do and leverage is one of those things that was necessary for you. So. I'd like you kind of just to share with everybody a little bit about you, right? Your background, how you got into real estate and what made you go out on your own to begin with? So I've been in the business for about 27 years. I was a long sigh. <laughs> it's been a long journey. Um, I wish I knew back then what I know now. I wish I had a, knew the Keller Williams family way back when right um very small rural area here at lake anna um and i was i'm from west virginia came from west virginia um my husband at the time was a school teacher i wanted to stay home with the kids so i was working weekends at a real estate company and saw all these people you know thriving and selling real estate and i thought i can do this so I got my license and stayed with that company for just about my entire career. And back in 2019, decided to open up my own brokerage. Um, stepped out of the business with the company that I was with. And I had a partner at the time. He and I left that company together and didn't really know what I was doing. Right. Um, had no clue what running a business entailed, but you quickly, you quickly learn. <laughs> well, like you let off with, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Was there a, like any particular one motivating factor you that said, Hey, I want to go do this on my own. Like, was there one driving force? Like what, how did you come to that realization? So we, he and I were doing a lot of stuff on our own. He was developing properties, like developing subdivisions. And we would go into the subdivision, build a model home and just sell out the subdivision. So okay. it was just him and I. And then we built a team. And then some of them left us. And then, you know, just like all businesses, they'll, they'll come in and then they'll leave. Um, so we built the business up to 16 agents. Um, then back in, I guess, 2023, I, I guess it was maybe June of 2023, I had a Keller Williams agent come to me and ask me if I've ever thought about joining Keller Williams. And at that time, um, we, we were a small independent brokerage, right? We didn't have the tools and the systems that I needed for my agents. I just felt like that they needed a little more. So I had an agent come to me and said, would you talk to my broker? And little did she know that I was already talking to a few other companies. <laughs> so um, I talked to Lee Beaver and she took me to um, Mega Camp. I went there being in this rural community. I went there and just looked around and I had no idea that there was this many real estate agents in the world. Like I was just blown away with everything and all of the things that people were willing to share with me because here at the lake, everybody's like closed off. Like they won't give anything away. And I'm there and they're like, here, take this, take my card. I'll share whatever you need. Just let me know. You know, so the culture that Keller Williams provided was just far above what I could have ever imagined. Now, when you're 
were, when you guys were building that up, right? Your brokerage and you know, 19 was an interesting year to get started in building a business, right? <laughs> yeah. But there has to be some things from that time that you cherish and you wouldn't trade for the world. What were some of those experiences when you were doing it by yourself that you learned, you go, you know what? That was incredibly valuable. The, the family of those people, you know, those agents that came together and just helped me build that business. Like they all jumped in and we did things together. Like the education that all of us brought. Um, thing, just things like that. You know, so it's a sense of community, it right? Was, a a tight knit business community. We were right, where we all really had each other. Family. Back. <laughs> yeah, yes. absolutely. I absolutely get that. And when you look at different locations, right, that's really what kind of champions a lot of that together too. Is that right. sense of community? You experienced it at a large scale of looking, looking like, hey, this, wow, this is eighteen thousand people that are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure I'm successful too. And that's a pretty amazing feeling when you feel that for the first time because you recognize it locally and now you're saying, wow, I could tap into all of this. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So part of the decision making process, because honestly, when you go from 19 to 23, when the questions started happening, really not a terribly long period of time and a really you know, a vibrant time in the real estate market, which we weren't really expecting during those years, right? We, we were really looking at, hey, COVID, let's, we, we got to be careful. But it was the exact opposite when everybody realized they couldn't live together and work together and raise their kids and teach school together. They needed more space or vacation homes. Yes. Right. When you transition and started really kind of looking up to what besides, and you said, hey, I really love what I see here, but what, what was that decision making process like realizing that there's more and I can pour gas line on this thing that we started here at Lake Anna? So I, th I think to, for me, it, it was a lot of the education, the leveraging, you know, and just, I think just digging deeper into the possibilities of, you know, when you saw all of those other agents on stage and the things that they were doing, like I, I wanted to, I wanted to, I guess, walk on that ceiling. Like I wanted to be that next level. Um, I love that you recognize that because we have conversations all the time with, with teams and brokerages and indies and business owners that are grinding it through and saying, this is my baby. I've built this and this is running with it. But you were kind of like, I built this and I know there's more. Yeah. And there's leverage that I can get out there. And I think that's a really special thing for somebody to recognize about themselves and going, I've taken this and I want to take it further. further. Yeah. And I'm not so much closed minded that nobody can help me. Yeah. And when I, so I had 16 agents when I told them I was going to Keller Williams, all but four of them left me. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it was, you know, just four of us came over to Keller Williams and now I've built this back up to, I have 16 agents now. I was going to say, cause I didn't know that part of your story and I was on site at your location and there was a whole heck of a lot more than four people in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a, I mean, that's, that's only a year ago. That was, in, we, I mean, if you're talking 2023, right? We're in 24, then you were talking about making that move yeah. and you went from 16 to four. Mm -hmm. You said, no worries. I got this. Yeah. Well, right. Hold my coffee. Yeah. So, right. And my office manager came with me, obviously. And um, she said, Lori, sometimes you have to trim the bushes, trim the flowers in order to grow. And I said, OK, I, that's going to be my motto. Like, you know, they 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 didn't all come with me. Right. They went other places. Um and I have acquired some really good talent now and still, still getting them. So when they left, right, let, let's be real for a couple of minutes, right? When they left, mm -hmm. what did you think? Like, how did you feel? I, I was devastated. <laughs> what am I going to do? How am I going to survive? What, you know, I was worried. 
but I, you can't dwell on that. You just have to move forward and make the best of it and then go after, you know, just put it out there and go after the, the better people. And, um, and, and it worked, you know, I feel like, I have built a really good brand here at the lake. I've been here for a long time. And with Keller Williams, the national brand backing a local brand, I think that's really helping us because there's not really a, a big brand here. So at no point did you doubt, like, was this, was this a mistake? In the beginning, kind of, <laughs> not gonna lie. That's okay. When everybody left, I was like, maybe this wasn't a good decision. And then we, we, I own a commercial building. We left that building to a new location. We brought in another independent brokerage under us. They had, um, so we did this after our transition. So they had four agents, two of their agents left them. So then I brought those two agents on. We moved into their building. Um, and this is the building that you came to and we've remodeled and- Great place. Yeah. So it, it's been a lot and we've only been here since April. And all of this has happened since, I guess the beginning of 2024. That, that's what I was saying. Like from yeah. the time you decided and talked to Lee and the other agent in 2023, to making the decision, to having the team be challenging all around you, yeah. but then also just rampant. It. Okay, I you know I can wallow in this, or I can overcome and own the decision that I made, right? And we're going we're going to go ahead. Yeah, and that's what we did. We just put the pedal down and decided to move forward. <laughs> yeah, and. I, I think that's awesome, right? And you think of like, you hear those stories, like Gary's story's not all that different, right? Like you hear about when he started, he was down to 13 people, mm -hmm. right? And look where we were at 180,000. Now, I don't know if we could support 180,000 agents in Lake Anna, but yeah. you know, by all means go nuts. <laughs> but I think, I think that's, I think it's, a, it's an amazing thing for you to kind of, to, to be prideful of that. Yeah, and I think with the support of Keller Williams and like you coming down here, Joyce has been wonderful and Robin and like everybody has just really rallied and, and helped us out. And the education, you know, we have a training room now and all the Zoom classes that we, you know, it's hard for us to go to Manassas every week and do a class, but you know, the way that they provide the training and the Zoom and it, it's just phenomenal. So Lori, I have a question. So <clears throat> got to know your journey, got to know like what you kind of like, as far as like start, finish, start again, kind of, you know, revamp. What was the original intent when you got into doing your own brokerage and being your own, like fully independent, fully autonomous to yourself, the vision and the impact you were looking to have through the vehicle of that business choice? So, like I said, um, the guy that it was Gary Griffith, that he and I started the brokerage together, we, mm -hmm. he was doing a lot of developing. He's developed over 17, 18 subdivisions on the lake. Mm -hmm. So he would develop the subdivisions. Our company, he would give those listings to all of our agents. So he wouldn't even take the listings himself. We would divvy them up to all of our agents. So they would come into the office and immediately they would have listings to sell, you know? So I think that that was the vision that we were, we were creating listings for them, you know? Can I, can I push you on something? I'm going yeah. to push, I'm going to push because you're, you're, you're staying very surface and I'm, you're, you're going to get questions from me. I'm not going to allow you to say surface. So what you're telling me just to play this one back is your vision and impact of starting your own brokerage was solely on the fact that he had, he created listings and inventory. And the only reason you did your own brokerage is that you would service the listings. Is that what you're saying? Well, not the only reason. I mean, obviously there's to build a lifestyle that I wanted, 
Right. Let's go down that way because everybody listening can hear like, oh, the prototypical platitude of I opened my own thing. I had listings. We sold houses. That's all we did. Very right. transactional. Right. Everyone listening is actually want to hear like the personal story of like, oh, so you could have gone with Long and Foster down there. They had a decent presence. Yeah. But you chose to open up your own brokerage. So there's a there's a everybody's choice in life is there's a motivation of like what you're trying to attain by doing so. I think for me it was probably about control. <laughs> I'm not gonna All right, everybody raise your hand that's listening right now that has control issues. Got it. So it's not just Lori, you're in you're in you're in good company now. No? So got it. You're you're you're, be, you're peeling back the it's okay. So you can be a little bit vulnerable. People actually want to listen to that. I got it. You don't be a robot. I don't like to talk about being in control. I have those issues. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot about control. My office manager can tell tell you um, that as well. I have I have those issues. Um, so I I could control everything. Like I. I got to say what was going to happen, um, where the money was being spent, where I could cut costs or how we were advertising. Um, and then my children, I have three kids. I wanted to provide a lifestyle for them. I, I can't say no to them. Um, I've helped my son buy a house. I've helped my daughter buy a house. They have no college debt. Like I'm proud of those things. And, and my ex-husband, since you're going down this rabbit hole, I'll just be honest. <laughs> he, um, you know, when we got a divorce, he rolled quarters for me and told me to go buy groceries for my kids. And I wanted to prove to him and my family, like, that I could do this. Like, I don't need you to help. I can, I can do this. So, Lori, that's the power of, like, what we're trying to share through this podcast is exactly what you just shared. I know it's vulnerable and it kind of feels awkward. Don't worry. It's fine. I get it. Uh, but when, you, when you're when you thinking about, like, the people that we're trying to share stories about, it's that that they're, you didn't start off with some, like, golden spoon and life was easy. Like, the whole idea is to give people hope and inspiration that they, too, can attain a lot of success. And I think your story is really just awesome. I know that's why Dave had you on was that, hey, look. You know, there was this opportunity through a connection that was producing inventory instead of going. You made a choice. I think it's a cool journey to hear the entrepreneurial impact of doing your own brokerage. But the real reason behind doing your own brokerage was like, hey, I like control. That's awesome. Like, no, no harm, no foul. That's Lori. Like, you can just own that. There ain't no wrong, nothing wrong with that. But it was that, hey, there was these other things. It was that I wanted control about where the money spent. I wanted to have a vision of something that I could directly control and not be subject to somebody else and it also turned into look what you did for your kids what you look what you proved to yourself look what you did to you know from the, the you know the, the, the ex-husband situation i think this is all a journey that everybody that listens to to be inspired that hey it's hard but there's something on the other side that's better and when you think about what your choice was in being in business for yourself as a broker owner and in sales you had an impact in your life that only truly was delivered through an entrepreneurial venture. Well, that's hard. It's not easy, right? It's lonely. Yeah. You're on that island, right? And that, well, well, there's a yin to yang. Hey, if I'm in control, that also means I'm 100% <laughs> responsible for the thing, right? That's and so let me ask you this question. You start with that awesome connection, open the own brokerage, do the control, do all those type of things. What was the thing that you learned in that venture that made you a better version of yourself? To, I think for me to know, to know that I can do it on my own, mm -hmm. you know, um, because a lot of, I think a lot of people think that they can't do something, you know, and it's just a mindset, right? Um, I don't know. So let me think about this one. So you let me ask the because I think funny stories of like, hey, how we mess up is really awesome because everyone likes to be self deprecating and laugh at ourselves. Um, so you start doing down this venture, what was like the most like, well, screwed that one up. Like if you think about your entire part of going into your own independent broker, and you're like, yeah, let me give you some advice. This is the thing that I screwed up the biggest. And I just want to share what I learned, like what it was and how I came out of that. Oh, gosh, there's 
Probably a lot of them. <laughs> um, I can't think of one that's like sticking out of my in my mind. Um, I think probably like hiring assistants and you know the hiring agents. I think is hard for me because I want to hire the right people, and then sometimes they're not a good fit. You know, they they. They're trying to interview us, right, to see if they want to come to our brokerage. But in fact, we should be interviewing them to see if they fit our culture. And sometimes I just let people come in. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I just let people come in knowing that they're they're really not who I would want. <laughs> so let me ask you this question, because I, I hypothetically, that makes a lot of sense about what you're saying for those of us that have actually had to hire and fire and do everything you're talking about. What is so if you looked at like when you started right by yourself to when you got up to like 17 team members, 16 team members, you know, give or take, what was the thing that you learned through all those years of being on your own around people and hiring? What's like you're gonna say, hey, here's the three piece of advice I give you on hiring of people given all my experience during that time as an independent broker. Hire slow, fire fast. <laughs> What does that mean? We hear that a lot as buzzword. What does that mean to Lori? Um, I think to bring them in and like, like to almost do like an internship with them for if it's a week, a day, whatever it might be, you know, to, mm -hmm. to see if, to see if they work well with you and are they willing to, to come in here and do that? Right. Um, I don't know, just get to know, sit down and get to know them as a person too, you know? Um, I think that's incredibly important because you're talking about, you know, a very small area, right? Yes. I mean, look, look, the, the lake area is not small, but you're, it's, when we're talking about number of agents and communities and the amount of transactions that take place in a particular area, people talk, like you sneeze and half the place says, God bless you, right? You, you know all the same people, yes. community yes. members and associated agents, yeah. right? So yeah, Grabbing that wrong person, right? Whether it's an agent or a staff member or a team member, can curtail all the progress that you've made. Yeah, because you're not you're going to the restaurant and you're seeing these people, the same people every time you go out to every single the grocery store. We only have one grocery store, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, you're seeing them everywhere you go. So, you know, I, I got a fun question. So, you know, we see all these agents, they wrap their cars all the time. You ever wrap boat down there? I do not. But you know what? That's a great idea. I probably should. <laughs> yeah. It's a perfect reason for an expense is all I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Do one of those tubes. I mean, you should do one of those, like, rent out the tube and so you can get a tube for free on your boat. You just got to have all our branded stuff on the lake. Um, but uh, I guess uh, the final question I've got for you, Lori, is that, um, when you go through, and I think this is really interesting. Like, and I'm glad that we're having this conversation is like, Hey, I went, did it for myself to prove myself. And then there's a reason that you wanted control. And then as you went through your experiences in business, you're like, there's certain control I want. And then there's other things that are actually better to relinquish control. Could you explain your, um, journey on coming to a place where you're like, Hey, I do want to partner with a bigger brand now. Like, what was that? What were the, the motivations behind that? Because it goes from like a lot of people like, hey, it's on my own. I can prove it. I prove myself. And then now I'm partnered with something bigger. Like, what was that for you? So I when I came in and I started the own, my own brokerage, wanting all this control, it's a lot of work. I mean, you don't realize how much time that you're sitting behind a desk and you're doing compliance and you're looking at all these contracts and the, the listings and the, you have to, the commissions that come in and you're paying that out, it, it's a lot of work. It don't just happen, you know, and all the software that you have to set up, it's, it's a big expense and people think it's, I guess people think it's, it's easy and it's not. And that's what I wanted to relinquish, like that part of it. So what I'm hearing you say, which is, I think it's actually really cool from an entrepreneurial like journey 
and the impact it has on your life. Like you, you got to a place to prove, right? The impact to Lori was I did this on my own. Screw all of you. I did it. Right. I don't need to prove Jack diddly. Right. Cause no one can ever, I think it's actually really important for confidence is that you did something. This is actually what I try to talk to all my people about is I want you to earn the right on certain things because what happens is if you earn it and you're not given it, no one can ever take it away from you. Right. It's something that you, you can literally always say, I did this and there is not a question in anything. There's a level of confidence and swagger that comes from that because then like, it's just, it's just cool. It's cool that like every person that's ever done it has that like level of confidence. And what I found when I'm hearing in your story, which is really like insightful for those like listeners is, Hey, I did this. I proved the actual motivation was to prove capability and to prove a lot of like things to people and also give me confidence. The second phase of that is like, now I can look at a business and say, the two things that I want now that you're in this part of your life or whatever your, your future motivations are is, I want leverage being time is all this stuff. And I also want a different perspective on my capital. And I think those are two really insightful things for small business owners and entrepreneurs is that at some point you have to look at the business and its maturity in life and say, am I getting the time on task or the, the time meaning like the ROI that I want in the business? And am I also positioning the capital inside the business in the best way possible to facilitate a life in the future? Which I think is fast. I mean, I think it's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I can, I can do it. I just, I don't want to anymore. <laughs> and it's, the, exactly. it's easy to understand, like I understand it all now. Right. But I just, now that I understand it and I know how to do it, somebody else can do it. That is so cool. Like that you had that full circle moment. Right. And that's kind of led me like, I was like, if you could talk to any others, cause there's a lot of independent brokerages out there and there are people that are doing it. Right. And that self-realization of, I'm doing it, but what what cost, right? What would you say to somebody else that, having gone through that and saying, here's why, come talk to me or come talk to us. The most important, and I heard you about education, but what's the, if you could grab somebody and be like, this is what I was missing. The leverage. Okay. The leverage, um, because now I, I feel like I can sell real estate. I mean, I'm still in a leadership role, right? I mean, yep. I'm still training my agents and, and they still come to me. Like we, I know we have this compliance broker, but they still look at me as like their broker. If they have questions, they're, they're coming to me and asking me, Hey, what, do, how do I write this contract? Or I'm having a challenge with this and they're still coming to me. They're not. Well, you still love the real estate side of it. Yes. Right. So you don't have to relinquish that and just run the business. Right. Right. Now you've got the leverage from the day to day functionality, training, technology, support, efficiencies, and you still get to be who you are, which is, is that coach, that mentor, the developer of other people yeah. and an inspiration for them. Yes. Awesome. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. And I really look forward to that red boat going around the lake, <laughs> right? And what Lake Anna Properties looks like for you guys in the future. Thank you, so David. Thank Joe you, Joe. I, thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Entrepreneurial Impact. Thank you.